focus. Focus. <laughs> All right, hopefully we're in focus. All right, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is something a bit special and something a little bit different. You see, back in the summer of 2016, when this channel was in its infancy of around 30,000 subscribers, I had this idea. This idea to make a television pilot for a show about travel and landscape photography. And Wildscapes was born. You see, at the time, and actually still now, I believe that there is a market for this kind of thing. There's no TV shows out there that are aimed at photographers. Uh, well, you know, photographers and people who enjoy the outdoors. There are lots of travel shows, there are lots of adventure shows and exploration shows, but there's nothing that's really photocentric. Um, and so I went out and I basically made one. <laughs> I made a TV show. Um, and in fact, that's how I started this channel, because I couldn't find what I was looking for. So yeah, back in 2016, on a shoestring budget and with only four days to spare, I flew to Iceland with a small team and made Wildscapes. Now this, I'm gonna call it TV show, purely because of the formats. This TV, it's basically a posh vlog. That's what it is, a po it's like a vlog, but bits of it are scripted and there's, <laughs> there's a few scientific facts thrown in there. But yeah, this, uh, this video, it never, or the concept, never got picked up by a television network. I did have lots of meetings and discussions with producers and TV, you know, nobody wanted the concept as it was. So, it, yeah, it never really got picked up, so I always kind of saw that as a bit of a failure. And that's probably why in the past four years I've never, you know, it's never seen the light of day. Now, when you watch this, it's worth bearing in mind that a lot has changed in four years. My photographic style has changed, my filming style has changed, and the way I present myself has changed. And also my, <laughs> that, in fact, my haircut in this is, is what I'm dreaming of right now. I think my hair was perfect in this, <laughs> unlike now. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, when you watch this, bear in mind that it was four years ago. So it's gonna feel a little bit different to the type of content that I create today. Now in this, you're gonna see four images, two of which I really like, one of which is okay and I don't mind, and one of which is terrible. I don't like it at all, but the whole scene around that image was really good, so I kept it in there. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which images I like and don't like, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, but yeah, if I could go back and film this whole thing again today, I would do it differently. I would spend more time on location and I would probably also focus a bit more on the technique of photography, even though this is supposed to be a photography show. You don't ever see me talk about anything technical. I never mention apertures, f-stops. You hardly even see the operation of the camera. It's more about the landscape, the light, and the and the travel and the hiking and the outdoors. It's, it's more based on that. Um, and in fact, you can tell that because a couple of the images are panoramics and you don't actually see me take a pano and I never even mentioned that I'm taking a pano. Uh, so yeah, definitely a few things I would do differently. Now, I am very, very proud of this show and I still think that that it, there is a market for this type of thing. And actually, I'd love to do more of this. Like. One of the ideas, or well not ideas, but I don't know, like in the future, you know, years down the line, I would love for this channel to only release content like this. You know, maybe four or five big videos a year where, you know, where a lot of thought goes into them. Better than this. <laughs> this is my first attempt. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. If you're new to the channel, uh, this, this pretty much encompasses what this channel is all about. So make sure you subscribe because yeah, this is pretty much what we do on this channel when we can anyway, the minute we can't do that because we can't get out of the house, but you know, moving forward and, and watching my back catalog, you'll see lots of this type of stuff. So yeah, anyway, without further ado, four years later, please do sit back and enjoy my television debut, Wildscapes. Almost everybody has a camera on them these days, whether it's one of these or one of these and more pictures are being taken than ever before. On Instagram alone, over 80 million photographs are uploaded every day. And with each picture we take, we have the opportunity to tell a story. And more importantly, we have the opportunity to inspire others. 
I'm Thomas Heaton, landscape photographer and keen traveller. Join me as I explore the world with my camera in search of some of the most beautiful landscapes on the planet. In this episode, I'm going to be exploring the south coast of Iceland with its rugged coastline, waterfalls, glacial lagoons. And then I'll be heading into the highlands looking for something a little bit more wild and a little bit more rugged. So far, the weather is good. It's being kind to us. But the problem with Iceland is that can change in an instant. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Some good weather and some good photography. Unfortunately, my trip was off to a bad start. The weather had taken a turn for the worst and it looked like there was a serious accident up ahead. These roads are dangerous. They're really dangerous, um, especially when the weather gets bad like this. And it does look like we've got a serious accident up here. So um, whether or not we'll be getting any, any photography done uh, today, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, this looks quite serious. I mean, it's no surprise that this has happened in this weather. Looks to me like a lorry's gone off the edge. It later transpired that the driver of the vehicle did not survive the accident. With the weather deteriorating and light fading, I had no other option than to call it a day and hope for better conditions tomorrow. So I've come to Jokulsal and Glacial Lagoon. The weather has much improved on what it was yesterday. It's nice and dry, nice and clear. Now normally, when I come to a location like this to photograph, it's always best to come in the evening or early morning. But on a day like today when it's overcast and gray, it really doesn't matter what time of day you shoot. And the icebergs look absolutely magnificent on this black volcanic sand. So I think this iceberg in particular is gonna make a fantastic image. This iceberg's blue, and that's what we're looking for. The reason it's blue is because it's been compressed in the glacier over time, which has forced all the gas and air out of it. And as a result, all of the light, apart from the blue frequency, is, is absorbed. And that is why they appear so blue. So when you tend to think of a photograph, you often think of a split second captured in time, when actually you can extend that time where you capture the image. And what that does is that allows you to capture all of the movement that's inside of your frame. For example, the waves crashing around this iceberg, we can choose to freeze that moment, or we can choose to extend it by a second or so. And I'm gonna do the latter, and that is gonna give us a much stronger and much more interesting image. How I do that is by putting a simple filter onto my camera. So this is like putting a pair of sunglasses on your camera, it just makes everything darker. And what that means is the camera needs more time to capture enough light. So instead of taking a quick photograph, you actually take a longer exposure and you capture some of the movement and the motion in the image. Right, let's get this done. 
Right, I'm going to go in close to this iceberg, see if I can frame my composition. And if I get my feet wet, so be it. It'll be worth it. I'm just waiting for the waves to come. And as they recede at the exact moment, I'm going to press the trigger, try and capture all this movement in the water. Magic, absolutely magic. Really happy with that image. I think we really captured the mood and the drama in the waves, which is exactly what I was going for with that longer exposure. I absolutely love Jokulsal and Glacial Lagoon. The icebergs break off the glacier, they get washed out into the lagoon, and then they get washed into the sea, and then finally they end their journey back on the beach. It's a photographer's paradise, it's accessible, it's beautiful, it's absolutely magic. Although the weather had improved, the forecast was still not looking good for the south coast, so I made the decision to venture inland to the southern highlands in search of better light and more photographic opportunities. I'll be taking a local guide and switching to a more suitable vehicle. The highlands of Iceland are much more hostile and should not be explored without proper equipment and local knowledge. This road that we're on takes us into Landmannalauga, which is a fantastic area in the highlands of Iceland. Now this road in particular only opened yesterday, so we're incredibly lucky to actually be able to access this fantastic area. I really hope for some excellent hiking and some even better photography. Okay, just driving through the mountains here. And if we actually stop and turn around and look at the light over there, it's absolutely phenomenal. As a landscape photographer, when you see something like this, you, you just it's in your nature it's in your blood you have to stop and you have to take a picture and even though this was no way in the plan we're getting this so when you're in amazing locations like this you really do pray for the best light possible it always comes at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day so what i'm photographing here is this gorgeous red and pink sky above these mountains in the background. It's absolutely stunning. And that red and pink sky is caused by the setting sun behind us. Because the sun is so low on the horizon, the light's passing through all of the Earth's atmosphere, which is full of molecules like oxygen and moisture. And what those molecules do is cause the light to scatter. They cause the blue and the violets to scatter, which means we can't see them. And what we're left with are these sumptuous reds pinks and oranges. And that is why photographing first thing in the morning and last thing at night offers you the best chance of getting a stunning photograph such as this one. Before making our way to our campsite for the evening, our guide recommended a short hike up to a volcanic crater rim. What was waiting for me at the top blew me away. I'm just making my way to the top of this crater, we've got this stunning view just, just over there. We've got the sun rising and we've got this fantastic 
crater that's filled with this turquoise water reflecting all the colours in the sky. The problem is it's, it's really, really precarious. We've got, got a really serious drop this way, but I actually, ah, I actually need to be shooting from here. Well, I need to be shooting from here. And that is uh, a really dangerous drop on this side. So I'm gonna try my best to set the tripod up. So we've got stunning, stunning colors in the sky. We've got perfect reflections on the water below. And we're just gonna capture that in a single photograph. And that's it, absolutely magic. Just having a look at this map here. Um, this area is vast and there are lots of canyons and lots of peaks and mountains. So it's really important that I study this so I don't just wander off and get lost because I haven't, I don't have much experience in this area. These mountains are formed of rhyolite and that is a rock that's formed by magma exploding out of a volcano and then rapidly cooling. And as a result, you get these really vibrant, rich, bright colors with a patchwork of snow. Um, at this time of year, it's a photographer's paradise. Absolutely stunning images everywhere. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hike into these mountains, try and find a composition. Oh, that wind is certainly picking up. I'm not sure how that's gonna impact my hiking. And hopefully it's not gonna impact my photography at all. Something we'll have to do. <laughs> Something we'll have to deal with when we're up on the mountains. Okay, so apparently my two burgers don't hold the correct amount of calorific value for a hike, such as the one I'm about to undertake. So the locals have recommended a delicacy, two delicacies. Rotten shark, which is of course, part of the Icelandic culture where this had been buried in the ground and then hung out for about five months. So that is really, really potent, smelly shark. I'm going to eat that. We also have, which I didn't know was an Icelandic delicacy, a sheep's head, a boiled sheep's head. And I always say when you're traveling, and you experience new cultures, new countries, you should always, always do what the locals do, eat what the locals eat for a far better experience. So, I'm gonna try this rotten shark as a starter. Oh yeah. It's very, very strong. Yeah, it tastes just like rotten shark. Really strong, soury fish taste, but good calories. And now I'm gonna try the boiled lamb's head, which I've really been looking forward to. Whoa. Now I've been told that the best part to eat is actually the tongue. So, I believe this is the tongue. Which should give me superpowers for when enduring landscape photography in these mountains in this wind. 
but we'll see. Now well, that is actually delicious. Mmm. It's just a shame I have to look at this whilst eating it. Right, time to get my bag, crack on, and go and take some photographs. get over how nice it is here. Amazing colours, a fantastic patchwork of snow. The truth is I could actually stop and just photograph everything but if I did that I, w I just wouldn't get anywhere. I've got an objective, I want to get up into the mountains and I'm aiming to get to the summit of this mountain just here. And with a bit of luck I should be able to find my way up there, find the footpath and we'll get a cracking photograph. The problem I'm finding is there's still a lot of snow around. So actually a lot of the footpaths are hidden. Um, so it's quite easy to get lost, but I'm quite confident we'll be okay. Tired from lack of sleep and completely disorientated, we lost our way in the maze of lava rocks that strewn this alien landscape. And we were struggling to find a way out. Do you know where we are? Seems that we're completely lost. But I don't understand because we're on a path. Um, right, well, it's getting on a bit now. It's, it's gone nine o'clock and we've still got to get to the top of that mountain. And we're completely lost. So as nice as this area is, it is a bit of a maze of uh, volcanic rocks. Um, and because there's a lot of snow on the ground, the paths seem to come and go. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've got ourselves lost. I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world. We can see where we need to be, but the problem is we don't want to start climbing over rocks in the moss. You know, there's certain areas you're not supposed to walk on. Um, there are lots of these trails here. They look like footpaths, um, but after walking around for the past 25 minutes, it seems that, well, I don't know what they are, but they keep leading us around in circles. So we've completely lost the path that we were following, uh, which we were hoping would take us up this mountain, or which would have taken us up this mountain. And instead, we just seem to be aimlessly walking whilst possibly missing gorgeous light. Um, so yeah, I'm sure we'll be fine. We're gonna try and find our way out of this maze uh, and carry on get to the top of that mountain. Ah, there's a buried blaze there. Might be one. So I think this is the problem because like I said before, there's a lot of snow on the ground. It's quite easy for the trails to uh, suddenly disappear. And this trail marker was uh, just completely flat. I imagine that there are others that are buried. I think that's where we've gone wrong. But we now, ugh, we now know where we are. So we could crack on, get up the mountain and do some photography. Ah, shit. oh my God. Right, yeah, be careful walking on this snow. Half of it's hollow. Ah. Yeah. Um. So that's the problem with this area, you get all these volcanic rocks and um, a lot of them are hollow beneath and you get snow bridges that form, which is exactly what I've just done. I've just fallen down this. Um, luckily I was okay, but that could have been a lot worse. Onwards and upwards. I think with all this camera equipment and this incredibly steep climb, I have to take my jacket off. I'm in quite a rush. You can see behind me there's a, a thin, a thin gap in the clouds. And in about 20 minutes, the sun is gonna 
come right through that gap in the clouds and that's the light. That's the light that's going to light up the mountains that we're hoping to photograph. So this really is a race against time. We need to get to the summit of this mountain, find a composition, get ready before the sun makes it to that gap in the clouds. All right, let's go, come on. Wow, absolutely amazing. Oh, I don't want to fall down there. I'm going. Right, we've reached the summit and it is stunning. The light is just starting to come through. What we're going to shoot is over in that direction. I'm going to get the camera and get set up because that light waits for no man. So the light has finally broken through the clouds. You can probably see it illuminating my face. It's absolutely stunning. It's not just my face it's illuminating, it's illuminating the mountains in the background. And we're lucky enough to witness one of those rare occasions where we've got storm clouds to one side, bright sunlight to the other side. And that's just making the whole landscape pop with a certain vibrance and contrast. I genuinely can't think of anywhere else I would rather be right now. It's just phenomenal. I'm gonna take this picture and when I've captured this moment, it's, it's just gonna mean that everything was worth it. The entire hike up, getting lost, getting wet feet, just all worth it for this one moment. And that is why photography is so special. I'll have this forever. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Light is a fundamental element for landscape photography. One of the reasons I chose to come to Iceland in the middle of June is for the summer solstice. At this time of year, the sun barely sets as it hugs the horizon. And what this gives us is absolutely gorgeous golden light. Not the kind of light we'd get further south where it's known as the golden hour, where you get an hour of glorious light either side of the night. This is four or five hours of just sublime, soft golden light, perfect for landscape photography, just like we experienced this evening. That is why I'm in Iceland, and that is why I'm here during the summer solstice. beautiful landscape images you have to put yourself in front of something beautiful you've also got to remember that the best camera is the camera that you have on you so whether it's your local park or the highlands of Iceland whether it's a mobile phone or a professional DSLR it really doesn't matter just get out there take pictures and see what magic you can capture <laughs> 